be worried about. So I scoured the country, searched coast to coast. It wasn't very hard, actually. I found Erin, who says she needs help with her clutter. And I also found a man with organizational superpowers. His name is Justin Klosky, and I sent him to her home. Hey, Dr. Oz, I'm on my way to meet Erin, 35-year-old working mother with two kids. She says she's overwhelmed with clutter, and from the looks of it, I kind of agree with her. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Justin. Erin, nice to meet you. Pleasure, Erin. Come on in. So my goal is to teach, organize, create, discipline, and instill organizational values. So this is the... Den playroom. It's kind of like junk all over the place. It There's doesn't... no rhyme or reason where no. anything goes. No. All right, so laundry room. Mm hmm. Not laundry detergents. No. Your <laughs> random medicine, coffee, toaster, toaster oven. <laughs> life can get chaotic, and what happens is people start living their life and forgetting the stuff that's surrounding them is usually taking over because they're not dealing with it. And this is our basement. So there's a lot more clutter down here than up there. And this kind of becomes the dumping ground. I think I saved the best for last. This is <sighs> my crafting You can't area. even say that to me. <laughs> you want it to be a crafting area. Right. How does this room make you feel? Depressed, really. To me, physical clutter is emotional clutter and it is a distraction. It's time to take back control of the space. Right. You can, and that's why I'm here. Thank you. You're welcome. Justin, Austin, Aaron are both here. So, Aaron, thank you for being here. You. you are not alone. We could have picked a lot of our viewers mm -hmm. to have invaded. Justin, this is not unique for you, I bet. How, when you declutter homes like Aaron's, is it best to do it all at once, or just sort of ease into it gently? Talked about this a little yesterday. You want to ease into it. You want to see a space for what it is and then start making some moves to get control of that space. And you have to do it slowly because if not, it becomes very overwhelming. Right. And you don't even want to do it. No. You ignore it. But again, <laughs> and now, now, now that we understand the medical problems related to a clutter in our lives, it becomes a little bit more urgent. Come on over. Let's get to okay. Justin's rules. These are the decluttering rules I want everyone to be able to follow. Simple ideas everybody can follow to declutter. Okay. Their homes and make it easy to do at the same time. So I've got a pair of scissors here. Okay. We're gonna start the decluttering process. Okay. Take the scissors. <laughs> yeah. Cut right there. The first rule that Justin has is the one year rule. That was very dramatic. Yes. Aaron, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So what's the one year rule, Justin? One year rule. If there's something in your home, it has to have practical use. And if you're not using it after a year, you should probably let it go. This applies to anything, right? No matter what the season is, holiday items, period. And the what ifs, there's no room for the what ifs because we can all create those what ifs and then all of a sudden there's clutter. Mm -hmm. So that's the one year rule. So Aaron, Justin did this to your home. If I can yes. have this table here. We actually began to clean out everything that you haven't used in a year. Right. This is sort of a taste of what you found. Right. How surprised were you at how much junk turned out? I was actually shocked and overwhelmed, really, because I really thought I used a lot of the stuff. And then when he was like, well, have you used this? Have you used that? No, I haven't used that. I haven't fit in those clothes in about three years. Like, I haven't. <laughs> she was great, too. <laughs> you know, just kind of how, just How, how old are your kids? Uh, two and five. Two and five. So almost by definition. Yeah. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> Even if she loves daddy. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Look at this one, this crap. <laughs> so it just kind of accumulated and you kind of feel like emotional attachment to it. Which one do you feel the most attached to? The most difficult to throw away? This actually is probably the most difficult. My husband's actually thrown it away and I've actually taken it back out of the garbage. This one. <laughs> because What's so unique about this? I think it's because both my kids used it. It was in the hospital with us when we had them. So it's sort of like, I know I'm never gonna use it. I don't have anywhere to put it. Mm. So it's kind of been sitting on a rocking chair. And, um, but I don't need it, so it's time to get rid of it. Turn back to Dr. Green for a second. So if someone has emotional attachment to the stuff in their house, and you know, breastfeeding your children is a very emotional moment, the skinny jeans, you know, outfits from the kids, is that still clutter? That's what clutter is. Clutter is, physical clutter is all emotional clutter. And when we can connect to that, we are able to open ourselves 
Justin, what's your stance on this? Should we get rid of sentimental items or hold on to them? You know, you should get rid of sentimental items and hold on to the ones that truly are important to you. We all put emotional value into all of these belongings when, in fact, if we direct our emotions into the things that truly matter, then we'll have items that are more fulfilling to us. So start letting go of some of those sentimental items and donate them. Bring them to a local library, books to a local library, some of the clothes to a church, a synagogue, anywhere, because people will get use out of these items. Right. I, I hold on to the bib, they're small. <laughs> we kept five. This, yes, we kept five. Let's move so. on to the next table we want to declutter. Um, and this is a very, very important role. Go ahead and show it to us. Here it goes. Boom. There's a place for everything. Now that sounds like, you know, a pretty obvious statement, but we don't do it in our lives. What does it mean? Everything in your home should have a place, no matter what it is. And if you're bringing a new item into your home, you have to find a place, even if there isn't a place for it. And then you have to weigh it out. You know, some people in this audience, right, they might have no space in their home, but they're bringing in a new item. Value that. Do you want to make room for the new item? Or right. do you want to let go of an older item to make room for it? And then you start valuing what those are and clutter starts to dissipate. What about items that don't naturally have a place in the home? You know, little, little small things, clips, pencils. Just like we have here, right? You can buy simple organizational tools for everything on this table is under $15. So it doesn't have to be expensive. My favorite three on this table, mail organizer, right? Not for stacking mail every day and letting it pile up, but for okay. divvying out the mail in your family. Deal with mail every day. Then we have a simple, like, a tin for mints, for rubber bands, paper clips, push pins, and then mason jars. Most people have mason jars in their home. Mm -hmm. Use them for pencils, pens, scissors, letter openers. Very mm -hmm. easy stuff to use for organizing. Which would be most helpful in your house, Erin? I think the mail, definitely, because there's that stack of mail and bills and stuff that just kind of sits on your counter and you just let it sit there. We have a big so. a bucket in our house, literally, and it mm -hmm. all gets thrown in there. And if it's not cleaned up by the end of the week, it gets tossed. So right. everyone has to make their way there yeah. at what point during okay. the week. But, but we're messy too, by the way. <laughs> the final, the, I, I say these things, but I know what the house looks like. The final decluttering rule. Okay. Turn us loose. Redefine mm. the junk drawer. Who here is a junk drawer? Thank you. A, a lot of very honest people out there. I have multiple junk drawers. Justin, this seems like the one thing we should be allowed to have. No junk drawers, guys. <laughs> Think about what that means, right? What is junk? Trash, right? <laughs> junk is technically trash. You don't want to have drawers, let alone multiple drawers, for trash. So redefine what your junk drawer is and repurpose it. If you need to label it so you remember, put the training wheels on, label it, but don't have a junk drawer in your home. So I took a picture of my junk drawer. This is the one I actually have in my bedroom. Take a look at it. See, I. It's a little messy. I, I must say, so I found bad. crazy things in there that I didn't... What do you guys think? <laughs> Mixed feelings. Some better, some more. So, I'm told I'm going to feel badly showing this to everybody, but I actually have a picture of Justin's junk drawer. You want to see it? Or, what's not, you don't call it your... <laughs> it's, it's, it's just the drawer where my accessories go. Yeah, miscellaneous drawer. Accessory drawer. Take a look at Justin's. <laughs> now, I got to say, this is a... Uh, Justin, this is a different diagnosis. This is a whole different time. Dr. Green, <laughs> if somebody puts, first of all, is that drawer worrisome to you just to see that? Well, just a tiny bit, Justin. I do have OCD. <laughs> I have no problem admitting it. So your mother would be proud of you with that drawer. <laughs> <laughs> if some, Dr. Green, if someone puts these rules into practice, how is it going to affect their life? How is it going to affect their health? It's going to free up physical space. And by virtue of freeing up physical space, you free up emotional space to really have a healthier, lighter, happier existence with your children, with your husband, with your family. And with yourself. So I love Justin's drawer, but I don't know that that's what most people can do. Most of us have some clutter. The clutter is actually very human, but when we connect with that clutter, it gives us an opportunity to find what's really meaningful in our lives. Where are they, Gary? Can you find real meaning in your life and control the clutter? Definitely. Ever since yesterday when Justin was over, we, he was going through a couple things and it was, he just, they was simple things that you can do to think about, okay, do I really need this or do I have the room for it? Instead of just throwing everything in a drawer or down in the basement. Well, I, t I hope today we gave you a, a more compelling reason to pay attention to clutter. It's not just a mild nuisance that your mm -hmm. spouse and you fight over. It's actually a real issue for your health. Thank you both very much for being Thank here. You. Justin and Dr. Green both have fantastic books about how to declutter your home and your life. You can check them both out on DrOz.com. We'll be right back. Woo!